recipe ideas. So today I'm gonna to be using the mixed berry drinkable yogurt for breakfast. And I have a lemon that I have to use up in the fridge. So I think the berry and lemon will pair well really together. I'm seeing like some sort of pound cakey thing. I don't know. We'll see how it turns out. And then I will make something savory. There will be a part three for the recipes that I make tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. For the batter, we're going to be using two tablespoons of coconut flour, two tablespoons of the Paleo Baking Flour by Bombs Red Mill, one tablespoon of flax, two tablespoons of stevia in the raw, but you can use any sweetener you'd like, half a teaspoon of psyllium husk powder, one teaspoon of baking powder, and a pinch of salt. So give that a whisk, and then we're going to add in our mixed berry pillar yogurt. And I started off by just adding some so that the coconut oil would kind of mix in. One tablespoon of coconut oil melted and it looks kind of cool. Then you're going to need the juice of one lemon and I think that if you roll it and microwave it, it helps get more of the juice out. And then we're just going to be adding some more of the pillar mixed berry yogurt until we get a nice consistency. If you let it sit for a bit, it will thicken up and it should look like this. Next to bake them, I'm going to be using my silicon baking molds. And I actually ended up using five of them, even though there's only four shown here. So I just added an inch of water to the bottom to bake them in a water bath so it wouldn't dry out as much. And then I baked it at 350 for about 40 to 45 minutes. So we have here the muffins. I'm surprised they actually baked because I'm usually bad at baking eggless things. Um, and when I went to check on them at like after 20 minutes sort of, they were still super battery so I just like let them cook for an like extremely long time. I'll show you how I cut the kiwi um, to make it like spiky and cool, sort of. So I just, I usually cut it with a knife, but I peeled it. And then you just wanna like go in with diagonals like this. So up and down. Stab it pretty into the center so that when you break the kiwi apart, they will actually, the two halves will actually split. Break it apart like this. So punch it. And the strawberry actually has a hole in the middle. Well, at least big strawberries do. So you have a nice end point as to where to cut it. Ta -da. I added water on the bottom to make a water bath because water baths are fancy and I thought it would help not dry it out. And I think it helped because these four were in the water bath, whereas this one I kind of just put on the side and it got like burnt on the top. I don't think that's a bad thing. I think burnt things are like nice and fragrant as well. But if you bake them in silicone cups, they should pop out or not because the batter is sort of sticky. Yeah, but you have like this nice pudding texture in the middle. This one. Okay, there we go. Wow, perfect. So I'm just gonna plate this up and we'll see. <laughs> They're more like pudding cups, yogurt pie cups with like a nice crusty top. So it has like a nice change of texture. Like the one that I didn't put in the water bath, the top is like really crusty, but the bottom is really soft. It's like a cheesecake. It's like a half baked cheesecake. <laughs> I think if you like things sweeter, you could add more sweeter sweetness, but I like like not so sweet. What I really like about the berry flavor is like, the flavor is really strong. Like I brought it to this study break that I had and then like somebody opened the bottle like across the room and I could smell the mixed berry. It has like that really like classic strawberry, blueberry, banana sort of, I guess it's sort of similar to the strawberry banana one but that strawberry banana flavor is more banana-y where this one has like the whole raspberry blackberry thing going on. And interesting thing is like while I was baking these muffins, so I live on the second floor but the oven is in the basement but as I was walking down the stairs, I could smell the muffins because the flavor of this one is like so strong and like aromatic. So now I'm just gonna enjoy these and they have like a nice crust. I think it'd be nice to like poke into it with a spoon and like eat it as pudding. It's like healthy pudding. Hello. Now I have this decorative pumpkin that I'm going to attempt to roast. And you're like, usually when you roast these mini pumpkins, you cut out the little center part so you could like stuff it with something. but 
the only knife I have is this and this is like not gonna yeah I wanted to just like put this in the oven but it might explode because the steam needs to come out so I'm going to attempt to poke it with a fork so here goes I mean you can poke a fork I mean I don't know some people poke like sweet potatoes with a fork if this oh wait there we go it's working okay so I'm just gonna oh, poke some holes in it like that and then along with this I'm also going to be roasting um, the garlic cloves that I have because I feel like I need to use them for that. So this is actually working quite well. And then for the garlic cloves, I'm just going to chop the top off and then drizzle it with some olive oil, which I also got from the salad bar in the dining hall. Just take some, like pour it into your little cup, then you don't need to buy olive oil. I think this is not enough, enough holes. So I'm gonna move on to the garlic, which I have here. I'm pretty sure garlic can like last longer, but you know, just in case, I don't want garlic to be going bad in my room while I'm away. You're just gonna like slice off this part so you can see the bulbs. Like so. I actually think they're like sprouting in the middle. I mean, you can see like the green stuff. I think that's bad, but oh well. It smells like garlic. These are the garlics, so I'm going to drizzle them with some olive oil and the pumpkin. And both of them I'm going to roast at 350 for about 45 minutes, I think. Here we have the roasted pumpkin and roasted garlic. So I turned the oven off after around 40 minutes, and then I just let them sit inside while the oven cooled off. And now the pumpkin is super soft, and the garlic smells so good. And the inside is like, it got crispy and like... When I poked it with a fork, it was really nice and soft. And now like everything just smells like garlic. Like if I walk out into the hall, it just smells like roasted garlic everywhere. I mean, it's like anti-microbial or something like that. So it's good for you. For the pumpkin bowls, we're just gonna begin by using a knife to slice around the stem to make a little cap. And then you just want to scoop out all of the seeds. These small pumpkins surprisingly have a lot of seeds. Now we're going to move on to the garlic and all you have to do is sort of squeeze out the little garlic cloves and then you can mash them however way you like. You can go savage, mash them with your fingers or be more proper and use a fork. And now we're going to add in our plain pillar yogurt and you can add as much as you like depending on what kind of consistency you like. And then you just want to mash the garlic some more. So it's well incorporated and then pour the yogurt mixture into your pumpkin, but not too much. Then I just chopped up some avocado, added that on top, along with some pumpkin seeds and shredded coconut. And then I got this um, super spice shop from Prana Yums and it actually just arrived today while well, like before I was filming. So I picked it up from the mail services and I'm just using a dash of that. It has like turmeric, black pepper. I thought it would just add some nice spice. Note that if you poke too many holes that are too deep, the yogurt might leak out as you see here, but otherwise you should be fine. roasted garlic dip with avocado and that spice thing that I put on um super garlicky mm, so I recommend that you pair it with something like more pumpkin because this pumpkin is pretty small so if you like dip it inside that works pretty well or use it as a dip for I don't know veggies you can use it as a sauce for pasta like the eat banza that I used yesterday um you could bake it again. You could top it with like some cheese and breadcrumbs and then put it in the oven and let it bake. And then it'll get like all gooey in the inside. You can even add some cheese inside. Um, yeah, I just think this is a really cute way to serve it. And once again, a super easy two ingredient sauce soup. If you're like an avid garlic lover and you just eat straight up garlic and you, or maybe you need garlic for like some healing property, you can just make this and drink it straight up like soup. That's all I have for today's video, so I'll see you guys tomorrow. I've got 
two really awesome desserts planned, so hopefully they'll turn out. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what other videos you'd like to see that I can make this coming winter break because I'll have a bunch of time. Thank you for watching. Bye!